In this tutorial we will discuss animating boats and ships ready for water simulation in a tool such as the guided ocean layer. We will learn a simple technique that samples the ocean surface and produces a plausible animation without using a flip sim. This has the benefit of separating the water simulation and the boat simulation, making each more directable. So first thing I'm going to do is drop down a large ocean from the tool shelf. Um, the reason I'm using a large ocean as opposed to a small ocean is practically the same, but the large ocean doesn't repeat. You know, if your camera's aimed towards the horizon and you use a small ocean, you'll see the pattern repeating over and over again and it lacks realism. With the large ocean, this doesn't happen. So you get an enormous plane. That's ocean surface. Oops. Plane is eight kilometers wide, right? 200 rows. So each of those cells there is 40 meters. So yeah, that's big. And that's why you can't see the wave surface on there at the moment. Uh, that's the ocean preview. There we go. So this works by. Um, taking a grid, you scatter some points on it, you split the points 50 50, uh, and then you apply each of those points, you apply a slightly different ocean spectrum to it, and you merge those back together, um, and you don't get repeats because of the randomness. And this merge spectra is the thing that we're interested in because if you Pipe that into an ocean preview, it will distort it will distort the grid according to the, the wave structure that it's calculated. So that's what we want. That's how I'm going to pull the information out of the um, ocean spectrums using an ocean preview I'm going to pull that information out, sample it around the perimeter of the hull of the boat uh, and then just use some simple SOPs to convert that into the motion of the boat. Okay, So uh, I'm just going to put a null on there and that's going to call that spectrum out. So I've got set up um, a path here. That's for the boat, boat to float down. And I've got uh, three different hull types here. Uh, lifeboat, so that's that one there. So that's quite wide, 10 meters long. Uh, a speedboat like that and a catamaran which is very wide and very light so that's that one uh, but we're going to do the animation to start with on the lifeboat so just pop that back there we go and our first thing to check is that the lifeboat is in the right position so uh, we want the origin to be roughly at where you would expect the pivot point of the boat to be. So that's the middle centroid in this case. And the water line wants to be you know, where the boat would settle if it was in its natural state. So I've got the water line, the y equals naught plane going through about there. So that's good. Happy with that. Uh, 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 so uh, we next thing we need to do is to set up the animation. Um, oh yes, I've also got the, the corresponding shapes that go with this hull, right? So these are the shapes that are used to sample the ocean spectrum. So it's a simplified version. It's a cross section through the hull at the waterline, simplified. So each of these points will pull a bit of data out of the ocean spectrum. 
uh, using Ocean Evaluate. So very straightforward, very quick. Okay, so first thing we need to do is to get the animation right. Uh, so this is the the animation that's kind of before this animation happens before any of my pseudo simulation occurs. So this tells us where the boat's going at what time, and then um, we lay the pseudo simulation over the top of that, which I will call a simulation in future. But it's not really a simulation in terms of dops and all that, because it's all stops. Uh, so uh, what I like to do to make something go along the path is to just find a point on the path uh, that travels and use a copy to points on it. So let's do that. First thing is it's a NURBS curve, so we need to resample it. Yeah. Resample, which gives us lots of sub points, but also converts it into a polygon curve. Um, and the resample will put the length at 0.1 for now, that seems okay. That's reasonably smooth, yeah. Let's just unlink my camera because that's fixed already. Good. Uh, so that's that. Um, now in the resample, we want the tangent attribute to be uh, there so that we can align the boat's velocity to the tangent. Okay, so resample, that's that. Uh, next we want a carve, which we will animate. Carve, so we go to frame one, set that to naught, alt click, go to frame 50, set it to one, alt click, and I'm just going to make sure that that's a linear movement in the animation editor. Jolly good. So let's see what we've got. to assess that. Um, well, let's finish it first. Uh, so carve, uh, and then we want to delete all the points except the point that we've carved, which is that one. So that point is zero, as you can see. So if I blast all the others, that one points, uh, zero, delete non-selected. There, then we've got our point and we can copy to points. Two points. The point goes in the right, and the lifeboat goes in the left. Oops. It's G. So that's our animation, and it needs to point the right way. So if we go back to the resample and we rename the tangent attribute to V, copy to points will recognize that and align the boat in the right direction, like that. Good. Now, in order to assess the animation, we need to get uh, a preview. Of the ocean in the scene as well. So uh, the ocean surface preview is just too darn big, there's no detail. Um, so we'll bring in our own one. We need to bring the spectrum into this object anyway. So control C, go back to ocean animation. Uh, Merge, there we go, and paste in there. That's our 
spectrum. We grab that from the uh, other object and we need a grid. And an uh, ocean evaluate. There we go. Uh, so the grid needs to be a good bit bigger. Divisions, but not so many divisions that it doesn't play back smoothly. That's good. And uh, I'm just going to put a color on that. And merge them together so that we can assess the animation. So uh, let's see. Oh, we see it. Oh, there we go. I think that's a bit fast, really, given given the size of those waves. I think that's a bit fast. So actually, I've done it before, and it is too fast. So I'm going to just retime it a bit. So get the carve node and instead of that being on 350, I'm going to put that on 500. a bit more plausible. I mean the first thing about any simulation or pseudo simulation is um, you shouldn't really ask it to do anything too far outside of nature or physics or whatever uh, because then you're immediately asking the audience to believe something that isn't true unless you know it's central to your plot or whatever then you have to do that but but you know you shouldn't push physics unless you have to. Okay so I'm happy with that. Roughly, that animation, not too fast. So let's get on with making the boat move a bit more realistically. So um, we've got our grid, our ocean evaluate. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to um, copy this ocean evaluate over to here, like that, and plug the boat shape into that side of it. So now we've got, not the boat shape, I beg your pardon, the sampling shape. There, like that. Okay, that's not moving because uh, that needs to go into the copy to points, not the actual boat. So that's animated the shape in the same way as the boat. That's good. And then we pipe that into the Ocean Evaluate. So that gives us a version of the boat shape that's crinkled up according to the ocean surface. So each of the points on that rests exactly on the ocean surface, which is what we want. Uh, and so uh, what we can do is to compare the original flat version of that, which is here, and compare that with the Ocean Evaluate version uh, and use that to produce a transform which we can apply to the original boat shape. Uh, and because we're just transforming the boat, we can it'll stay rigid because it's just one transform uh, and that'll be it. So we need, copy to points there, we need to uh, an extract transform, extract, 
transform there and we go uh, required reference geometry so that's the original shape and target geometry is the ocean evaluate version there and that will give us just a dot but it's a dot that has a position and an orientation that is exactly what we want the orientation is quaternion so if we now do another copy to points on that we will see our boat hopefully move in exactly the right way so uh, copy to points points there and we'll take our shape those into the, that's our whole 3d shape there goes into that side and a point goes into that side and that's pretty much it now wobbles around those two together you can see that it hugs the ocean pretty nicely no mucking about with sims Uh, and if you change the hull type um, the sampling points are different and you get a different animation you see so um, if I make that a lot bigger so I'm going to make that three times as big. Uh, speed boat we're on, yeah. Get down there. Uniform scale three. So that's a huge yacht thing now. Uh, do the same with the shape. Just that one. Now if I play it back, we'll get a noticeably different animation. See, it's got a bit more heft. So this is the first stage of my boat simulation um, tutorial series. Um, in the next episode, we'll give the boat a bit of inertia so that it doesn't stick rigidly to the surface of the water. Give it a bit of roll and a bit of pitch. Give it some heft. There you go. That's it for now. Thank you for watching.